Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of my live question and answer session that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday the 3rd of April. So I'm going to be chatting a little bit about the new sewing society kits that we've had out, that's what I'm wearing just now, and about the new fabrics and the new window display that you can see behind me here. I've got some of your questions to answer as well, so should be a lovely, bright and colourful, inspiring chat about fabric and sewing. If you do have a question that you'd like me to cover in another session then do feel free to leave it in the comments below or you can email the shop. I'll pop the contact details in the description to this video as well. I'm going to switch over to the live recording now. You will hear me read out any comments and questions that are coming in live just so you've got a little bit of context of what's been getting asked. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in a second. Hi everyone, happy Monday evening. Me again here to chat to you for the next approximate hour. I've got some of your questions that have been sent in beforehand, but I'm going to be chatting all about the new fabric and the new kits as well. So you can ask me anything about that as well. Thanks for joining everyone. Lovely to see you. Um, I'll mention it again towards the end, but this will be the last live that I do for a couple of weeks just because it's Easter holidays here in the UK and yeah, I'm not going to be around for the next couple of weeks. So, so yeah, I wanted to chat to you tonight before I just, um, yeah, don't see you again for a couple of weeks. Um, I am quite tired, I have to say. Um, it has been quite a busy weekend um, with the with the event here in the shop and then releasing all of the kits yesterday um, on a Sunday. Normally we have our kit launches on, wed on a Wednesday. Um, so doing it on a Sunday is like a little bit different just because um, normally the team don't work on a Sunday. So I just had had a little bit more of a skeleton crew with me in the shop. It was just me and, me and Hannah. Um, yesterday in the shop and then then our web developer as well um, so so yeah anyway sorry I'm not really sure how I got into that much detail there in summary yeah I am quite I am quite tired but I am here I've got some of your questions to answer and I've got lots of nice things to show you so it should still be a lovely nice fun hour of fabric and sewing chat feel free to ask me anything as well as I'm chatting along and I will try and keep up with all of the comments um, so uh, some people are saying, um, mentioning about the stress of the weekend, Jeff, yeah, for, for those of you that don't know, basically our website was just couldn't cope with the amount of traffic yesterday and when we sent out the newsletter, it's quite a long story. Um, despite my best efforts, there is only, a, as a non-web developer, there's only so much I can do really um, in those situations um, other than like completely freak out and panic which is what I did, um, <laughs> but it was fine in the end. Um, okay, well done for such a fab birthday celebration on Saturday and the lovely fabric too, you and the team pulled off and it was amazing, thank you. So many people have been so kind and generous, you really are the best, the best bunch ever. Um, and we all loved getting to see you and chat to you all, it was just such a lovely atmosphere on Saturday at the shop. For those of you that couldn't make it to the event that we had in the shop on Saturday, I am going to do a little video on my YouTube channel with like photographs and clips and um, that kind of thing of the day, just so you can get a sort of sense of what it was like. It really was, it was so, so nice. Like I actually couldn't have, it was perfect. It was just so lovely. And we, we'd all been like working really hard here to get like all of the details just right. And yeah, it was lovely that it just all came together. I don't know if it was also just because maybe like it's still kind of post pandemic and there's just to be able to like come to something that just felt really like nice and normal and was like really good, just like made it even more special. I don't know if it was like to do that as well. Um, well done for getting through the stress of the launch. Thank you. Good evening, Lauren and everyone. Congratulations for Saturday. It was lovely to see so many people there. I actually, because it wasn't ticketed or anything, I really didn't know what to expect. Like I wasn't sure how many people were going to come. Um, and I was quite overwhelmed. There was a lot of people like, 
you at, at most points really for the first kind of four hours I would say you couldn't really move in the studio that much and um, because it was so packed out with people but it was lovely everybody seemed to be having a really nice time so that was good and um, love the fabric of what type is it and um, so the one I'm wearing here is a neck of very viscose but I'm going to just do a little bit of a summary and go into more detail that in, in a second and um, I'd love to make a maxi dress that doesn't have a waist and um, I actually brought I brought some other ones over the, the patterns that you could use um, with this fabric the wilder gown's quite a nice one it doesn't have a waist and it's got really like lovely gathered tears and it's quite loose and sort of floaty and um, you are generous to do a blog tonight after all that busy weekend I've, I feel like I've got like the last remains of adrenaline in my body that I've managed to somehow sum up together tonight and um, to be able to do the one. I think tomorrow I need to try and be resting a little bit. Um, maxi dress with my lovely anniversary fabric. Um, love seeing all the g, g staff in handmade clothes using the new fabrics. Yeah, the team were amazing. They looked gorgeous. They'd all made different garments in the fabrics and they all looked looked really different but really really nice so I do I've got photographs of all of them as well I'm going to do like a blog post and a little video that sort of explains like the different things that they made because I think it's really useful to see like it made up in different things too Um, I love that dress bought the kit and came it was a great feeling we didn't mind queuing, very British, that's true. <laughs> Congratulations Lauren and team on your 10th birthday, love the new fabric and story behind the creation. I had a lovely time at your celebration, I just wish I'd swap numbers with the lovely lady from Edge Baston I chatted with upstairs, she was wearing a closet core ebony I think. Okay, if you're out there and you have, and you have a closet core ebony and you're from Edge Baston, can you get in touch with Anne underscore likes underscore to underscore so? She wants to be friends. That's really lovely. It was so nice to visit on Saturday. I love the fabrics. Don't mind the queue at all. Made some queue friends and had lovely sewing chips. Um, I will be in the shop on Wednesday to spend my birthday gift vouchers. That's exciting. Um, was gutted I couldn't get there. Bought so much on Sunday. Um, chatted to other sewists so time queuing went quickly I love my fabric and the top I've made from it it feels gorgeous thank you lovely thanks Elizabeth okay so so for yeah for those of you that couldn't come the kits were the closet core next top and dress so that's so I've got the maxi dress version on just now I don't really have the right footwear on but you can't see my feet anyway and um, so this has got an elastic waist it's really comfortable and it's got lovely details so it's got like little gathers at the yoke here it's got a gathered section at the back as well and then you can either have short sleeves or these these gathered sleeves but they're not they're not really full I feel like the sleeves just a really nice amount of fullness and then it's got little rule loops down the front and little self-cover buttons that's a really lovely detail there as well and then the maxi dress has got three tiers but you could definitely customize them to your own proportions so you could have we did make another version which you'll see on the listing for the kit that's just the top two tiers it comes up maybe like a bit short um with that one you know depends what sort of vibe you like but i did make another version which i actually love which is the the top tier and the middle tier but i lengthened both of them by two inches so then for me it made it a bit more like knee length and it looks really nice and um, so again you can see fo modeled photos of that in the kit listings as well um so so yeah we had we sort of split the kits into two you could either buy enough you could buy a kit that was had enough fabric to make the dress version or you could buy a kit that had enough version to make the top so I do believe I think we are out of the original 0 to 20 size range kits and um, we do still have some of the curve size range kits left for the dress for the tops we've got lots of everything and um, for the dress it's the curve size range one so you get the you get enough fabric to make the maxi dress and you get the the printouts for the curve patterns but because closet core treat their pattern size their two size ranges as sort of one product you do get the pdf files in the kit for all of the sizes and um, so you so you would still have that anyway um 
you and you would you would if you were making a size that was in the original size range and you had the curved kit then obviously you just have some extra fabric but there's so many things you can make with it i've got some examples here some people have been just generally asking me other questions about it all um will there be a video about the window display garments there was a dress in the window i loved in the new print but i couldn't tell what it was yeah i am uh, as part of like the staff what the staff have made um I'm going to mention what is in the window and actually the little video that I've made about the event mentions it too but obviously I'll tell you now as well and um, I think it's probably that one there that you mean Helen it's the named Taika dress and um, so it's got buttons down the front and it's got quite a sort of flattering um kind of it's sort of like a seam here that comes underneath the bust with gathers it's got gathers in the back as well and elastic in the sleeves it's really nice um so so yeah could i take the waist elastic out of your dress version yeah i think you could you could definitely just make it and not put the elastic in like just make it as it is um and then just like sort of miss that step that that could work i have to say thanks lauren for guidance on grade jacket after last week's live ordered dahlia twill and a0 2 p.m friday received and break in the next morning oh that's good Thank you, it's on my to sew list, so good to see it in the flesh. Yeah, it's really nice. I've been wanting to make that for a while. Um, so somebody was also, other things that people were asking about the new prints were, was, does the viscose need lining? I don't think it does. Um, I have, uh, you know, I've got dresses out of all of the three colourways and even the the cream colourway, which is, that's the closet core next to this behind me there as well. I, 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 that's what I wore on Saturday. It's not lined. I don't feel like it needs lined. Um, so yeah, that would be my answer to that. Um, somebody asked, would you consider keeping your custom fabrics as regular stock? So we do, we do have stock of them just now. If you like them, it is available, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I would keep it as regular stock only because when you get something like specially made, you have to order like a significant amount. And, you know, I can't really like top it up and then it just becomes like quite logistically difficult because we are still quite a small business. Like we don't really have space to store like really large volumes, lots of fabric all the time. Um, so, so yeah, uh, possibly not, but we do have stocks of it just now. Okay, Rachel's asking, do you get the whole dress pattern in the top kits, please, Lauren? Yes, you do, um, because the pattern is just like for everything. Um, so even if you get the top kit that has enough fabric to make either the top or the tunic version, you would still have the pattern to make the dress another time. Um, so yeah. Okay, then somebody else was also asking pattern recommendations for your new birthday fabrics. So I've pulled some ones off of the pattern shelves in the pattern room that I think is a nice little selection of different things. Somebody was also asking for fabric recommendations for the Deerendale Magnolia dress, and you could definitely make the Mag Deerendale Magnolia dress out of this fabric. Um, the Deer and Doe don't print their patterns anymore, so you have to get them as PDFs from the Deer and Doe website, and then we can print them for you using our A0 pattern printing service, if that works for you. Um, but other suggestions of things that you could make with our birthday fabric, the Sage Brush Top, the Friday Pattern Company one, that would be really cute. It's got that little ruffle in it as well, which I think would be really nice. And then, as I mentioned before, the Wilder gown would be nice. That's a nice dress that doesn't have a waist. Somebody's asking about no waist. Um, the Florence dress or top. I've got a I've got a really lovely Florence top that I wear a lot, and I think it would look nice in that as well. And then the Friday Pratt and Company Davenport dress. The new Tilling the Buttons Mabel. I think that would be gorgeous. I've got quite a few Tilling the Buttons patterns. The Lyra would work. Um, the Marnie with those little frills and little pin tucks. And then nice simple one, Tilling the Buttons Lotta, Ogden, a classic. If you've got some left over from your kit, you could probably squeeze an Ogden out of it. Um, the Tilling the Buttons Indigo and then the Closet Core Ebony. I think all of them would look really nice in our print. So a few suggestions there. Um, I've been inspired by all your lovely next dresses and have made a tear, an elastic waist channel to a dress I made two years ago, but didn't wear much. Thanks for giving me the idea. Oh, that's good. Did you size down for the next dress as it's quite roomy? Yes. Yeah, so I talk about this more in the tips video that comes with the kit about choosing a size and variation and that sort of thing. So I, I'm, 
I made the one of the first versions that I made was the size that my body measures to. So in closet core, I come up as a size six. So I made that and it was very, very roomy. It was the tunic version that I made. And you can see what the fit of that is like in the modeled um, images that are on the kit listing for the top. And um, so it's the, it's in it's in this colorway, the navy colorway. And you can see how roomy it is. So then for the other versions, I actually sized down by two sizes. Um, so then I was making a size two, even though I measured a size six on the pattern. And the only tweak that I did to that was that it felt a teeny tiny little bit tight just because the back yoke's quite fitted. So then I just sewed a centimetre seam allowance when I was putting my sleeves in at the back. And just that tiny little bit of extra just gave me like a little bit more room. But yeah, it's very roomy anyway. You know, it's got because it's got the gathers here, that's sort of where like the shaping and fullness comes in for the bust. So it doesn't have any bust starts. And then, you know, yeah, then it is, you know, it's obviously got the elasticated waist and you can kind of customize to how tight you, you know, you want that to be. Um, so, so yeah, I did size down. Um, I'm looking for a wrap around summer floaty skirt. Um, so over it, I've got a nice one. I can't remember what it's called, as do Fibre Mood. Um, I've ordered the, your cream viscose for the Florence top. Great minds. Um, the fabric looks absolutely gorgeous. Congratulations on your 10 years. Thank you. Um, I've bought the fabric to make the chalk and notch orchid midi. That sounds really lovely as well. Um, so I'll, sh I'll show the other, I'll show you the other garments that we've got here, the other versions of it. That, so that's the one with the, with just the V-neck and the facing there. So it's just got a center front seam and the shorter sleeves. Um, then that's the top version that's got the longer sleeve. So it's the same sleeve that's on my dress, but on the top version. And then what's this one? This is the tunic version. So this is the one that's got the, the buttons down the front and then like the little gathered peplum, which I actually also shortened as well. So I cut, I cut like a quarter off the length of that. And then, and then, yeah, that's just the, the other top version again with the long sleeves, but in the cream print. So but that just, that'll just give you a little, um, bit more detail about all the different colors there they are all together and um, so and so then the other the other kit that we've got the other fabric that we have um is the chica cheetah print that we did have on a viscose before so it's now back on an organic french terry for the megan nielsen jarra kit so we've got the three colorways of that one here and um, this is this is pretty much the same as the navy one that we had before. There was just a t a little bit of it that got recolored, um, on this one. So so yeah, and we've got the matching ribbing that goes with it. So that was custom dyed to go with each colorway. And in the video that you get with the kit, we sort of show you how to add a really cool little facing bit at the back, which is nice. And then for the tie version, how to add a facing on the bottom of that as well, so that when you tie it, you don't see the reverse of the fabric. So as I said, it's a French terry fabric, a loop back. So it's got those little tiny loops on the back. It's really lovely and soft. It's nice and stretchy and it's quite lightweight. So the type of garment it's gonna give you is more of like a lighter weight sort of sweatshirt for the spring, which is good for this time of year. It's really nice. I have actually been wearing this one all day today very comfortable and um, I did also size down in this as well it comes up quite roomy and um, so we do still have some of this fabric by the meter I think this one might be almost out by the meter and then it won't be until we sort of like reconcile all of our stock levels and then we'll sort of see if we've got some more and um, but yeah we've been very busy crushing lots of fabric today um, okay, so I think that was everything. No, the other things that I was going to tell you about the prints and the kit and everything, in case you've missed it, is we did have some other little mementos of the day as well. So we've got um, these little woven labels. So you get four different designs in them, two of each design, and all of the icons on it are things from the print. So we've got a bee, the harebell, the fuchsia, and the rose. Um, so, so yeah, and they all say little nice phrases on them. Be happy, me made, feel good and handmade. So we do still have some of them left as well. And then we've got some little me made ones too. So you, you do get one of them in your kit, but that's nice metallic threads. So it's just a little bit fancy. And then we have also got some notebooks as well. So we've got them in each colorway of the print. So it's just a plain 
notebook inside for sketching your ideas or writing your list it's been sewn down the spine which i think is a nice touch and it's got this lovely gold bead on the cover so yeah we do have like every colorway of the fabric on the notebook you can either buy it as a bundle or you can buy the notebook um separately so yeah we also have that it's like a little memento for the day as well and um, do you have any of the navy ribbing left yes i believe we do i'm so excited for my fabric to arrive what a fabulous collection well lauren you must be shattered um yes i am <laughs> so i definitely need more of the colorways of viscose to put my labels in well there you go yeah you need to you need to balance it out lauren will you ever have a label with your kits that say g and g sewing society um i'll bear that in mind thank you okay so the other on to other things now we do have some new fabrics other than these ones which i just wanted to let you know are now in stock they are the Atelier Brunette Double Gauze Ginghams, which did come in a collection of lots of colours before and they've brought out lots of new colours, um, which are sort of nice and bright and summery. I think my favourite one is this one. It's a lovely magenta colourway. So it's it's double-sided, so it's like two, two sizes of gingham you kind of get in the same fabric and it works really nicely. You can do like contrasting things with it. Um, so we do have all of the new colourways of them. Um, I'll just sort of quickly hold them up. This one's sort of quite lilac-y. That one's like a lovely, nice, bright, kind of orangey, ready colour. And then we've got a nice, a nice bright yellow and a chestnut and a kind of olive colour as well. Um, so yeah, all of that, all of those ones are now in stock on the website along with all of the new things too. Um, would the Chica Cheetah material work with the Tilly, Tilly Coco? It probably is a little bit thinner than what you would normally use for the cocoa, but I think it should be okay. It's going to feel more like like a lightweight top compared to like making the cocoa in a Ponte Roma. Um, okay, so the other questions that were sent in beforehand that I wanted to share with you tonight where could you share some tips on how you usually square up the fabrics after washing since it may be distorted affecting the grain line so i always think that if you're when you're pre-washing your fabric the first thing that you need to sort of do to make sure that they don't distort is consider how you're drying it and that is that can be affected more or less that can be like more important or less important depending on what type of fabric it is so if it's a stretchy fabric for example if you wash it and then you dry it and you like peg it up on a washing line, it's going to stretch as it dries and that will distort the fabric and then it will affect your accuracy as you're cutting out. So whenever I am drying stretch fabric, I try to dry it ideally as flat as I can. So I've got a sort of like clothes dryer that opens out and it's got quite a flat top. So I'll sort of fold it in different layers to sort of lay it flat on there. Or if I can't do that, then I try and hang it over my banister so there's like equal weight either side. Um, or, you know, so so yeah, that's something to consider. That can happen with woven fabrics as well, but it's maybe, maybe like potentially easier to sort of steam that out. But definitely before you come to cut out, you need to be giving your fabric a really good iron with a hot steamy iron to make sure there's water in the iron. Always iron it on a single layer, like don't fold it in half and iron it and try to iron it immediately before you're cutting it out because if you iron it and then fold it up and put it away somewhere and then come and cut it out later it'll sort of have natural kind of folds and like little kind of creases in it from it just being folded so iron it just before you come to cut out and then if it's quite especially sort of slippery fabric like if it's one like this a viscose that moves around a lot or if it's a jersey that moves around a lot the other thing that i do is what I'll, I'll fold it and like make sure that the selvages are together all the way down sometimes I might even pin them I don't do that all the time but sometimes I do and it does help and then you want to try and square it up against like if you're working on a table or you know cut, like cutting table whatever kitchen island whatever you're cutting out on it's good if you can try and square it up along a straight edge of it because then I what you're aiming for is that you're making the fibers that have woven the fabric like sit at 90 degrees to each other because again that's going to make sure that the fabric's in the right orientation for nice accurate cutting out cutting out with a rotary cutter and a cutting mat can also help to increase accuracy as well and like less shifting around 
obviously that can be like a little bit logistically challenging sometimes and you might not have that that sort of equipment or the space to set that up because you need quite a big mat um, and then obviously you need the rotary cutter as well um, so a few things to try there somebody else is also suggesting with washing stretch fabric don't have the fastest spin option i've made that mistake before um somebody's asking would the chica cheetah make a marlo cardigan yeah would hannah made one that's what she was wearing on the day it looked really nice could anyone recommend a pattern for a mother of the groom pattern please um if you if you I always suggest if you're looking for like really nice dress patterns, my favourite places to browse for inspiration there are Fibre Mood have lots of different nice dress options, as do so over it. There's lots of different styles there as well. Um, or you can look on the Fold Line website as well. That's the massive pattern database that's got loads of different um, patterns, dress patterns. Um, what was the name of the two layer skirt dress pattern you showed me yesterday? Um, okay, you were asking someone else that. Okay, I'm not sure. The fold line have a wedding attire blog. Ah, that's even good. Narrows it down a bit. I made cocos and French terry and cotton jerseys, so I think the Chica Cheetah would work. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks for letting us know, Christine. How long did you take to make the special g, &G fabric? Like to design and then print slash weave. I do. I, I, I actually released a video today in a blog post that explains the whole process. Um, I think it was probably about July last year that I started it um, and the fabric finally arrived with me, like the whole of the stock arrived um, kind of like beginning of March. So um, quite a while. The Fold Line did a blog recently suggesting patterns for occasion wear. Thank you. I'm going to make the Pearl Cardi. Hope I ordered enough. Yeah, Becca had was wearing the Pearl Cardigan. They're telling me about the Pearl on the day as well. Um, okay, so what other questions that we have here? Can you please explain the difference between the Gutterman top stitch thread and the denim thread? Can you use the denim thread for stitching? And do you need a special needle? I'm planning to make a denim jacket and a skirt over the next couple of months and I'm confused which thread to buy. So in terms of top stitching, this is the two this is the two threads that we've got here. So this is the more sort of traditional top stitching thread. It's very thick. You do need a special top stitching needle to stitch this because the eye of the needle is bigger and it means that the thread can pass through it without resistance and it helps to keep the tension much more consistent. When you use this one, you just use regular thread in the bobbin. Then with the denim top stitch thread, it's a little bit thinner, so you can use it with a denim needle. You don't have to use a top stitch needle, which is quite good. You can use it in the bobbin thread as well, but you don't have to. If you're stitching something where you're not going to see the underside, you can just use regular threads in the bobbin, then it saves your top stitch thread, but you can use it in the bobbin if you want to. Um, so I would say this one's probably a bit easier to use. Um, I t if, I, if I'm making jeans or like when we made the denim jacket, I tend to sew regular seams and just regular thread. It, you, you would only switch to this when you're doing stitching that is actually top stitching. So then you ha are having to sort of change between your stitching a little bit. So yeah, I hope that makes it a little bit clearer. Um, okay, um, the Stand Deep Dress by By Hand, Land, by Hand London. That was the two tier dress that was getting referenced earlier. I've bought the navy and sky blue French terry. Would it be wrong to buy the pink too? Definitely not. They are quite different. I think you'll be fine. Um, I find it hard to concentrate as that dress is so beautiful. I might have to get the navy fabric as I already ordered the kitten cream. Um, I know they are, they are, they are nice. They are, and they are quite different, you know, like the vibe of each one's quite different because the colours are different. Okay, the next question was, what kind of seam is used when you sew with the reversible fabric? I made a hovia using the padded two-sided fabric, then realised I couldn't use one side because of the raw seam. So I would probably say with that specific fabric, using the matching binding is quite good. So you can, you can bind the raw edge and then you could, you could, um, ha then hand stitch it flat so that it, you know you don't see it but generally if you're making things reversible other seam options are to use a flat fell seam so where all of the raw edges are kind of like all sort of hidden and then it gets top stitched down but that's going to be quite hard to do with that specific fabric the the whole the it's the mind the maker thelma quilted fabric which was in the hovia kit um 
so I would suggest using the, the yeah the binding and then like sort of stitching that down. Okay, the next one is how would you reduce the rise on the saguaro trousers? So I was talking about this last week. This is the Freddie Pattern Company pattern. They're they're like really lovely and comfy, quite simple wide leg trousers. Um, and when I've made them, I feel like I, I totally wear them and I love them. But I feel like if I made them again, I would just make the crotch a little bit higher and the length a little bit longer. There's There are different ways to do it, but if I was going to do it, what I would do, I've like drawn a little like mini trouser here. So basically, so there's like you cut the crotch curve there. So where your grain line is, if you draw a line that's at 90 degrees to that, and then cut the pattern all the way across and then literally just like overlap it by however much you you know you want to take out and then that you know that then you have reduced the height of the crotch and um, the other the other thing that i as, as a sort of side to this the other thing that i do on my trouser patterns because i've got um i've not got much shape in my hips and my bottom is that i do I do a flat seat adjustment which is where instead of that line being at 90 degrees it's on a diagonal and then you so it's usually I think I usually do it like that in that sort of direction and then so there's like a little hinge here and then I just overlap it and it just reduces this distance here so it makes the crotch like less long there obviously that's quite specific to the back and um, so so yeah but if you were like generally wanting to bring the whole like waistline down you would do it there front and back and then overlap it i hope that i hope that helps um was it exciting to design your own fabric would you do it again it was it was exciting and like quite nerve-wracking as well because it, you know i was like just really hoping that people would like it and i didn't really know if they would or not and like you, know, you just kind of go down the process and you just kind of yeah you have to just sort of go with it and yeah, I think I think I would do it again. I think you know you learn a lot from doing it. Your dress is lovely. That navy fabric is brilliant. Thank you. Could you make the next blouse with the V neck without the seam in the center front, so cut on the fold as to not have the seam in the beautiful fabric? Um. Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay, the next question was, can I replace the facing with bias binding on the neckline of any woven top? Tips to get it to sit flat. So you can, but you might have to think about um, the seam allowance that's used because it might be that the seam allowance used to sew on a facing is more than the seam allowance used with bias binding. I made this mistake before with the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress and I put a binding on it rather than a facing, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make the neckline opening bigger and then it's just quite tight getting on and off over my head. So just check out the seam allowance because you might have to make the neckline a little bit bigger before you put the binding on. Um, and in terms of getting it to sit flat, you I, I would say if you're putting binding, bias binding on, definitely even more so you need to stabilise the neckline before you, like as soon as you've cut out really, my favourite way to do that is using the prim forming tape interfacing, which is basically like where you're ironing on stay stitching and it's really good for helping the neckline to stay in the right shape. So that will help it to stay flat. And then just, just regular, as you're putting binding on, like regular pressing at each stage really helps as well with a nice hot steamy iron. Again, make sure that you've got water in your iron so steam's generated and pressing really helps by binding to sit flat as well. Um, the next one was any info on that sewing retreat. I'm sorry, I don't really have an up update on that. It is still on the horizon, but like due to the circumstances out of my control, I can't really make it happen any faster right now. I was hoping that it would be ready to do this year, but I think it's probably going to be next year. I'm not sure. So I'm sorry, I don't really have any in more information on that. The next one is how can you remove Chaco liner, please? It can be tricky, especially if your fabric's got quite a loose weave and like the chalk's really embedded into it. I mean, I would try, you know, just try and wash it. You could try like a stain remover or sort of like soaking it and trying to gently agitate it so that the chalk kind of comes loose from, from the fabric if it's like really staining it. Um, the next one is, do you always pre-wash? I end up in tangles of thread. I do always pre-wash. I don't know, it's just like a habit that I have. I like to pre-wash. Um, and... I like to overlock the cut or torn edges of the fabric before I do that. 
just because I think it preserves the fabric a little bit more. Um, I mean, some people feel like it's not necessary, but I don't know, I like it, I like doing it. Um, so that will help. If you don't have an overlocker, you could, you could use some sort of like overcast stitch in the sewing machine, or you could even just sew like a rough sort of hem in it, even just like turn it, like turn it once a tiny little bit and stitch it. It's just something to hold those edges together so that, so that it doesn't fray in the machine. Um, okay, let's see what other questions I have. Um, been coming in here. Your staff are amazing on Saturday and worked so hard. They're a credit to you. I know they are. They're amazing. They're very special. Do the next dress buttons gape? Um, it depends how sort of vigilant you've been about the the loops, the rouleau loops, and how long they are. Um, so so it might gape a little bit if your ruler loops end up being a little bit too long but what you can do we show this in the video as well you can just like slip stitch the front closed if you wanted because the neckline's big enough to be able to take it on and off over your head anyway could you make the Ogden cami without a facing um i don't i don't know if you could because i think it would be hard to like get the strap where the straps attached to look neat if you didn't have a facing so i'm going to say no to that one would that adjustment mess up the pocket placement? Um, it would maybe make it a little bit lower, but I think if you were only doing it by like an inch or something, I don't think it would really make a significant difference that you need to worry about. Um, the strap, yeah, somebody else is saying probably not for the Ogden because the straps are enclosed between the front and the facing, yeah. Other than knits, I serge all new fabric before pre-washing. I learned the hard way, yeah. It is useful if you do that. Okay, the next question was, what helped you make the decision to leave your job and set up the shop? You are so brave. Well, thank you. Um, probably like slight naivety in there as well. Um, I didn't totally know what I was getting into when, at the time. Um, I don't know, I think it's like quite a long story, but <laughs> I don't know, like I think sometimes in life you just have to be like open to change and opportunity and possibility. And that if you don't, you know, if you're not, if you're not really happy in the situation that you're in, you need to be like quite open to, to, to trying something else or like learning something else or just thinking in a different way in order to make your situation different. Um, and yeah, I think I just wasn't, there was like lots of just circumstances at that time when I left my job when I used to be a physio that just, you know, weren't, you know, Thing, things I just felt like I needed a change um yeah sorry that's that'd be quite deep maybe a story for another day okay the next question was do you have any fabric suggestions for the Maysan Jamelia jacket I had a quick look at this one it kind of reminded me a little bit like the Elford but I feel like there's maybe like a little bit more like shaping to it or some more details it looked like it had a sort of separate bit of fabric that was like the button band at the front slightly different pockets and I think it has a back yoke as well but I guess that kind of sort of vibe like of the Elford and um, I've got quite a few different options for that one cord would be really nice and um, this is one of the Atelier brunette cords but we do have lots of other corduroy fabrics too so just generally as a fabric option I think corduroy would be nice um, the other one, which is maybe like a little bit more summery, it would be our Rami fabric as well. So this is a bit like linen, it's sort of nice, te nice and textured and got a lot of character in it. Um, and I think that would make a really nice sort of lighter weight jacket for the summer. Um, again, this is going to be like a little bit more lighter weight for the summer as well. This is um, from our Seven Berry range. These are Japanese fabrics. This is the speckled cross hatch on indigo cotton fabric. Um, it's a bit narrower, it's 44 wide. We've got a few in that range, but I think that would look really nice as well. And you could maybe sort of coordinate with some other fabrics from the same range as well for the different elements of the jacket, which I think would be nice. Or just a lovely plain classic and this is the fabric that we used when we did the Elford as a kit and um, this is the old blue cotton twill fabric so it's 100% cotton and it's got really lovely twill texture on it comes in lots of lovely plain colors so I think that would be a really lovely option as well Um okay somebody else is saying when pre-washing sew the two ends of the fabric together it doesn't get so tangled in the washing machine ah that's a good idea Um. I put my fabric in a laundry bag to when pre-washing. Any idea when you will have the prim bra accessories back in stock? Um, I'm not sure actually. I need to check because they might 
they, they potentially might be discontinued. I'm not sure on that one, sorry. Go with your passion, life is too short. Indeed, I totally get that. Feel the fear and do it anyway. <laughs> do you think you could make an Ilford from the Thelma Quilted? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think you could. I think you could. Can you tell us a little bit about the fabric designer you worked with on your fabric? I go into more detail on that in the video that I've made, so on my YouTube channel now and on the blog about the process of designing the fabric. Um, but I, I'd come across, her name's Rachel Parker. She's amazing, she's very talented. And I come across her because I'd seen other fabrics that she'd designed. Um, and then I, um, so, so she designed the Chica Cheetah print um, a few years ago now. And I sort of bought the, the, the rights to use that or like the exclusivity to use that. And then I could turn it into fabric. Um, and I just really love her designs and I, I like working with her. She's so nice. Um, so yeah. Um, I left my job in physio two years ago and I am now studying textiles. I'm 53 and I sew every day. Follow your heart. We are only year one. Oh, that's a lovely story. Sounds like you're having a great time. Very good. Okay, the next, qu I've got only got a few questions left that were sent in beforehand. Again, I'm sorry if you put one in the little question box, but I I ended up having to just put it up so late because the weekend was very intense. Um, but yeah, I can always add them on next time. Um, okay, so somebody asked, I missed the Dolby fabric again. That was the tufted um, Dolby fabric that I used for my fiber, fiber mood normal blouse. It's the white one with the coloured dots on it. We do have some on order, so hopefully it'll be back again soon. Um, the next one was, what jumper patterns would suit the black chunky knit fabric? I'm thinking the Jarrah or the toaster. Um, this is this fabric here. This is the teal colourway, but it does come in a black as well. And we did have it in a navy. I'm not sure if we've got any left though. My, I would say that my, my preference out of the Jarrah or the toaster would be the toaster version 2. And that is because this one doesn't have any like cuffing or like a neck band, the neck is just like the fabric folded back down because I don't think you could, I don't, I don't really know how this one, if this would work that well, if you were making like a smaller neck band, like a narrower neck band, it might do. It just doesn't, it doesn't really have that much, re much recovery in it, this fabric. What is it? I think it might be, a, oh, the tag's falling off. Um, what is it? It's cotton, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. So it doesn't have any stretchy fibers in it. So the, the stretch and the give that it's got is due to the way that it's been knitted as opposed to the fiber composition. So that's why I'm just not sure whether making it with something that's got like a, a neck band that would normally be stretchy would, would necessarily work, which is why I think probably my, my top choice would be the toaster version too. I think it would look nice in that. This fabric does also tend to fray quite a bit as well. So I think you definitely need to, if you've got an overlocker, amazing. If you've not, I think you're gonna have to do some sort of like overcasting stitch on the sewing machine to finish off the edges there. Um, the next one was um, fa fabric for the Fiber Mood Willa dress. Prefer woven with a bit of stretch. Now I did look this up so I could describe it to you and it, my memory, my tired brain is like really bad memory right now and I can't remember what it's like. It's the Fiber Mood Willow dress. The fabric that I picked out for it was that we do have some stretch viscose fabrics which are quite nice. They've got a nice sort of weight to them. Um, this one's quite a new one as well. It's the abstract animal stretch viscose fabric. So it's 90% viscose, 3% elastane. So it's, you know, you treat it as a woven fabric it's a viscose twill, but because it's got a last stain in it, you see it's stretching. Uh, so it still has the nice floppiness. It has the nice drape of viscose, but it's got that little bit of added stretch in it as well. So that would be a nice option. We do, we do If you just search stretch viscose on the website, you'll find some other options as well. The other one that I've got is this one, which is a plain weave viscose, but it does have a little bit of a last stain in it as well. This is the floral stamp on claret stretch viscose. And I think it's a black, the other colorway. Um, and again, it's 97 viscose, 3% elastane. So it's got a smoother sort of flatter surface because it's a plain wee viscose, but because it's got the elastane in it, you can see that it's just stretching a little bit. But again, it's gonna be lovely and nice and nice and floaty and drapey. So good, you know, it's not gonna be like stiff or anything. It will be lovely, lovely and comfy to wear and nice and sort of swishy. Um, so that would be a good option there. 
Um, and then the other, I think that's everything actually. That was everything that was sent in beforehand. The other fabrics that I did bring over, which I probably should have mentioned at the start, but I was just getting a bit carried away, was somebody did also ask if we had planes that go with the new fabric print as well. And we do have some really nice ones. So the first one that I brought over is this pink cord. I have a pair of closet core ginger jeans made out of this cord, which I love. And I think it looks really nice with the print. This is, I wear this in one of the modeled photos on the listing. So that goes really nicely. Nice with a pair of trousers. And then I've, we've also got, this is the cotton twill that I was showing before, but this is the rose colorway. So that would be nice for like a little jacket or something. Um, or you can make like a nice little pair of shorts maybe for the summer. I think that would look really cute. And then I've also got some colorways of the viscose linen fabric, which I love. So the bottom, what, what colorways are the, actually these bottom ones? The bottom one is the turquoise. Then we've got the accru. Then we've got the orchid pink and then we have got the lilac. Oh, I'll show them up. And I've I've held them up against um the against the prints as well. And I think they look really nice. You sort of see them there. Hopefully that gives you uh, an idea of what they all look like together. Um so yeah, the these fabrics are really good for trousers. This is why I used to make the Friday Passing Company Saguaro trousers. Um, so they're, and so they would be nice for the Merchant Mills Eve as well, like any sort of nice kind of looser baggier trousers or skirts would look good in those fabrics. Um, and then we've also got this accru one as well, which is nice too. This one is it's just nice neutral one that would go with them. Accru abstract jacquard cotton linen fabric. So it's got a really nice texture to it and nice, yeah, just like a nice natural colour feeling to it. I'm just trying to separate it out so you can get an idea of how thick it is. I would say it's more sort of like light to medium weight. Um, but again, it would, would be nice for like lightweight trousers in the summer and um, maybe like a little wraparound skirt or a gathered skirt or something. Um, just another nice plain option there. Um, somebody's asking, could you make the closet core Jenny in that cord? Yeah, I think you could. I think the Jenny might be designed for, for non-stretch fabrics. So it might be potentially maybe that you need to size down a little bit if that's the case. But yeah, I think it would be good. Um, that could make a fab Clio in the pink. Yeah, that's true. I accidentally used Mariflex thread on a woven blouse. Do you think it will cause any issues? No, I think it should be fine. Um, what needle do you use for those woven fabrics with elastane, stretch or universal? I would still use a, just a regular needle. I don't think you need to use a stretch needle because this the the seams aren't really going to be under like significant, I don't think the seams themselves necessarily need to stretch um, because it's not that stretchy. So I would just use a regular needle. Um, what a great collection your fabrics love. Okay, I've seen them before. Do you plan on a blazer g, &G Sewing Society kit? We don't have any immediate plans for that. I'll certainly take note. Looking for fabric suggestions for seamwork lily dress. It is a sundress with princess seams. Has some structure to it and the pattern calls for light to medium weight fabric. It, so it sounds like if it's a nice sundress, it sounds like maybe some of our of our printed linens or our viscose linens would be nice. Um, so if you if you have a little search for viscose linen on the website, you'll see lots of nice options. Um, okay, I think that is that's everything. Okay, so um thanks ash jeans in the pink cord yeah sure why not and um, the ash the ash jeans are i guess are sort of like similar categories to the closet cord gingers so yeah i think that probably would work if anybody's got any other questions then feel free to shout them out now but otherwise thank you everyone for joining me tonight thank you for all your love on the fabrics and everything and there will be more content coming out this week on it so yeah as i said that there's that that post that i've got that's about the design fabric design process then i've got hopefully i'm going to get around to doing that tomorrow It'll be like a little sort of roundup of the day on saturday lots of nice photos and videos and things so you can get a sense of what it was like if you can come and then also the post that's about all of what the staff makes wear and what was in the window and other things that you can make with the fabric too um 
sorry i'm late to join does the cream print need lining lining no i don't think it does thank you lauren hope you can have some restful time thank you for all that you do for us sores you're welcome it's a pleasure thank you to you and your staff thanks for all your advice enjoy well well earned break and um, we've got all your orders to post out first then i'll try and have a break how much fabric do you need for the norm at top size 12 how wide is the tufted fabric you had sold out by the time i tried to order um, I can't remember all the top of my head. I'm sorry, maybe like a meter and a half. Would the lilac linen suit the Pietra trousers? Yeah, I think it would. I think that would be nice. Um, happy Easter to you all as well. What pattern is the navy top behind you, please? This one's the assembly line cuff top. Um, enjoy your Easter break. You have worked so hard the past few days, weeks. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you have some well-deserved rest. Enjoy your Easter break. Thanks, thanks for all your lovely kind words, everyone. That's really lovely. Um, see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Thank you. My next has been dispatched today. Can't wait. Yeah, we're 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 gonna try and be chipping away at sending all of the new fabric and kit orders out. There is a lot because it's Easter. Some staff are on holidays as well, so just. Just bear with us and note that for the kits, the shipping window is up until the 21st of April. So that's like our de that's like our aim. That's like our deadline for making sure we get them all out by then. But, you know, hopefully we get them out before then. We are trying very hard to keep on top of it. Um, can I squeeze a fibre mood Norma out of one metre? Maybe. I don't know. You might have to short, maybe have to have shorter sleeves. Um, well done, Lauren and the G&G team. Hope you all get lost at lots of R&R &R over Easter. See you very soon. Thank you. Okay, well, enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone, and enjoy your Easter and enjoy your new fabrics and kits if you've ordered them when they come. Hopefully there's not too much of a delay with Easter bank holidays. Um, and yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye.